So we have to understand when we're choosing life and choosing death, what constitutes death and why do we choose it? So if we understand why we're choosing death, we'll kind of understand what it is to have this free will choice. What, what exactly this means. Um, so what's the ultimate form of choosing death? Killing yourself. Suicide. Right? So if we can understand the ultimate form of choosing death, we can understand the concept as a whole of what it means to choose death on a daily basis, whether it's small or large. Obviously the most extreme concept is suicide, but if we can understand it better, then we will to understand the concept as a whole. So um, we want to know what's going through the person who's committing suicide, what's going through his head, why is he doing it. Um, we know that he wants to avoid pain, right? He wants to avoid pain. He has something in his life that he's trying to escape, and he's avoiding that conflict. Um, so I will, there's a, a story of a man who's jumping off a bridge, and also it's not a true story, it's just an analogy. A man's jumping off a bridge, and a reporter runs up to him and says, like, please, please, before you jump, talk to me. He's like, okay, so, so why are you jumping? Uh, you know, I lost, I lost $10 million in the market crash, and my life is miserable. You know, I don't have my Ferrari anymore, and everything's just terrible. And he's like, well, how much money do you have left? Well, if I sold my house and my Porsche, I have like a million dollars. He's like, a million dollars? It's a lot of money. And the, the, you know, the guy's about to jump. He's like, how much money do you make a year? The reporter's like, yeah, I make $40,000. He's like, $40,000? Are you kidding? I'll make my $10 million back before you make even $1 million. So the reporter says, so why don't you live? Hey, what's the matter? You have, have this money. You even just said you can make this $10 million back. He's like, no, no, you don't know what it's like to, miss, to lose $10 million and you get back to nothing. I'm jumping. So the guy jumps. And that's it. So what happened? He was focusing on the bad. All he saw, all he saw was that he focused on the bad parts of his life and he decided to choose death. He, he said that I, I can't deal with this pain. I have no ambition to go through the challenge of coming, of coming all the way back from, to 10 million, even though he knew he could do it. If, if you ask him, what do you really want to do? He's like, I want to be rich again, right? He wants to have his money back. But he has, he's avoiding the pain of doing that. He doesn't want to go through the effort. So he takes the easy way out. He commits suicide. And in a sense, that's what we're doing every single day when we make choices. We're either choosing to not jump off the bridge, or jump off the bridge, obviously not to such an extreme extent. But when you're staring at the ceiling and not listening to your teacher, that's what you're doing. You're jumping off the bridge. You know, you want to learn, but you're staring at the ceiling, right? Same concept. You're smoking that cigarette. You know, or you're on a diet and someone offers you a piece of cake. You know, I'll just have this one piece of cake, you know? It's the same concept. Do you want a cigarette? I do not want a cigarette. <laughs> but for Shem, I don't smoke. Shouldn't you not eat cake at all then? What? Constantly on a lifelong diet. Yeah, let's, life well, then you're, you're basically just saying, shouldn't you always 100% of the time do everything right? right? Is that your question? If you're saying that staring at the ceiling is killing yourself or going to your computer and fussing around for a minute. Right? So it's a difficult thing to do, wouldn't you say, to do that your entire life, every second of every day? Yeah. So, um, how are you choosing life and death right now, at this very moment? How are you guys choosing life or death? So I have to pay attention. So I take notes. Or maybe you're thinking, like, I just can't wait for this to end. I'm going to go, I'm going to leave, and I'm going to you know, go to Tel Aviv right after this. And you're not even, your mind's somewhere else. So that's not one way we're choosing life and death at every moment. So we have to be aware that every single moment we're choosing between life and death. So in the case of someone who's committing suicide, he's avoiding a problem in his life, something big. There's something big in his way that's blocking his life. But it's also it's important to understand that when we're choosing death, it doesn't necessarily have to be a problem in our life. We're also um, not going for ambition. So we want to be great, we want to do something amazing, but we're deciding not to. We're deciding to you know, sit in our class and you know, sit in our room and do nothing. So it's not that there's a big problem in our life and we're trying to escape from it, but that we're avoiding being great people. We want to change the world, but we don't always feel like putting in the effort. So there are five stages of free will, which I want to get into now. Um, and understanding these five stages of free will and be able to work your way through each one of them, all the way up to through stage five, you'll be able to control your free will. You'll be able to understand it better. You'll be able to know yourself better. You'll be able to know when am I making a life choice, when am I making a death choice, and why am I doing it? What's causing me to make th this decision? Um, but also, this is also going to take practice in small steps. I don't expect everyone to go home today and do all five steps. 
Um, but I'll give you guys some tools that you can use that will remind you of these five steps that we talk about today. Um, okay, so the first level is self-awareness. Self-awareness. So what do I mean by self-awareness? You have to know that at every single moment of your life, you're making a decision. A life or death choice, essentially, I'm using the extreme example, but you're choosing, you're using your free will at every single second. If you don't know that you're, you're not using your free will, let's say right now you're sitting here and think, I'm not using my free will, I'm just sitting here. I already made a choice to sit in the classroom, right? I already made a choice to do X, Y, or Z. I'm not using my free will anymore. So two things could happen. So obviously you're choosing either life or death. So if you're choosing life, that's great. You're doing something good, but you didn't even know that you're choosing it. So the next time you come into the similar situation, why would you choose it again? If you didn't even know that in the first place you were choosing life, there's no reason for you to do it again. Because most likely, why would you, you know, you're not going to assume that that was a good thing that you're doing if you're feeling neutral. Um, in a worst case scenario, that you don't know you're using your free will, but you happen to be choosing something that, that is bad for you, then you are not going to be able to know how to prevent that poor behavior that's essentially going to make you unhappy in the future. So if you don't know that you're making, if you don't consciously know that you're making essentially a bad choice or a good choice, then you're never going to be able to have positive behavior in the future. Does anyone have any questions? That's good. 